I am James Kotecki. You are in the C-Space studio here at CES 2020. And with us is Laura Mullen. You are the president of Ad Sales and Partnerships at NBC Universal. Welcome to the C-Space studio. Thank you, good morning. So NBC, I feel like probably most people on the planet or in America have heard of NBC, but can you just kind of define the full scope of what brands we're talking about under the NBC Universal umbrella? Sure, at NBC Universal, we really have something for everyone. And with our purchase of Sky, you know, reach nearly everyone in the world. Mm -hmm. We have so many premium content brands that consumers are so passionate about and really help to create so many pop culture moments, whether it's the Olympics, the elections here in the U.S., mm -hmm. um, things like Bravo and people's favorite housewives and Bravo celebrities, Kardashians, some of the best reality shows, whether it's America's Got Talent or The Voice, dramas and comedies that are scripted that consumers and people love everywhere, like This Is Us and Brooklyn Nine-Nine. We have parks um, with our Universal theme parks, Universal Pictures, um, and our Purchase of Sky. There's so much that we have, and, and we're really known as an entertainment brand that consumers love. And do, is that kind of term of passion, the kind of umbrella that kind of threads all of these things together for you? Because those are obviously a lot of different brands that one individual may not watch all of those things, but is passion the overall umbrella? That really is a great way to put how we um, put together our products at NBCU. We have, you know, super fandom around our content and our brands. You know, when I think of something like um, Bravo, the, the Bravo fans are crazy, and just this year, we had our first experiential event with BravoCon, and tickets to that sold out in literally one minute. And the passion around that event was outstanding. And the great news is that we came up with BravoCon, um, or decided actually to move forward, in the middle of the year, and we put it on in November. And as soon as we brought it to the marketplace, marketers jumped right on board. And they were so excited to work with us because as you said, they know the, pan the fans are so passionate about Bravo and that translates to their brand. So we've done research mm -hmm. that actually shows, we worked with a company called Coherency to measure brand love. Mm -hmm. And we had a hypothesis that brand love would translate from our brand to a marketer's brand. And that is exactly what happens. And we took, we've now translated that across the company and we see that passionate brands, whether, like I said, it's The Voice or programs on Telemundo, um, the Olympics, consumers get so passionate and that passion translates right to a marketer's brand. So there's two follow-up questions from that. Okay. One is, everybody here at C-Space, which is the marketing and media section of CES, would love to create brands that people are really excited and passionate about and have that brand love. And then separately, they would all love to take that and bottle it and be able to market it, right? Transfer over to marketers, as you said. Or marketers might want to you know, bottle that for themselves, the marketers who are here. So, I mean, I don't know if there's a secret that you can necessarily divulge in this format, but what is the philosophy that allows you to do that? Because everybody would like to do what you just described. Sure. So at NBC Universal, we really put the consumer first. I mean, you are a viewer, and I am a viewer. And when we recognize that if you put the consumer first and focus on what the consumer loves and then put it everywhere that they are. So we work with every platform to make sure that our content is everywhere. A great example of this is the red carpet. So E! Red carpet is something that's been famous since the Joan River days sure. and continues to grow today. And the reason why it's growing is not because it stayed on linear, but it's because it's transcended every platform and became a global brand. And so we now can reach 80 million people in one week with the red carpet across Twitter, Snapchat, Instagram, Facebook, e, you know, e news, mm -hmm. e um, online, e, you know, e our linear network. And so marketers are now able to attach their brand. And when we went into the marketplace years ago, when I first actually came to NBCU, they were selling um, the red carpet a little bit here, a little bit there. And we were looking at the audience and we were looking forward and I have the good fortune to have um, teenagers at home. Mm -hmm. And I was seeing that they were 
looking at things wherever and whenever. Right. And, and in an on-demand world, you have to put your content there. And E quickly embraced that because they have a younger demographic. And marketers weren't moving as quickly in that direction. And so we really put an edict that a marketer was not going to be getting the full value of the red carpet if they didn't buy it across all the different platforms. And we didn't say you have to buy it on every single one, but we said mm. work with us. Let us help you find your audience where they are. Engage with them. Put the content that you're creating around red carpet everywhere. And this philosophy is transcending everywhere across NBCU. And so re really breaking legacy in the way that we've done things in the past where you just buy things one place and really working with a marketer to reach a consumer with engaging content around their brand with content that consumers love to really get their message yeah. everywhere. You mentioned teenagers and breaking legacy and new generations of viewers. Something that's also changing is the way that people interact with and react to and even conceptualize advertising. And so you have advertising right in your title. How do you think about these trends? What is your data telling you about how people are reacting to advertising, especially younger generations? So we do a lot of research around this and what the data is informing us is that consumers will really embrace advertising if you do it right. So one example is we came up with something called Prime Pods where we cut 12% of the commercial load um, and took the first break of most of our Prime shows and we air only two spots. Mm -hmm. And it's a 60 second break and what we saw is that it really works well. One is you're going to get 86% retention, which is the average retention for a show is 65%. So they're watching through the commercial. Mm -hmm. Most consumers are watching through the commercial. But it also pays for all the metrics through the purchase funnel. So 18% say that they are more likely to buy a product when it runs in a prime pod. And then you're seeing that 33% lean in and go for a deeper learning experience, whether it's going online and digging more about that product or other ways to dig in and learn about a product. So we see that when you put the right environment and you also work with marketers, like another way is that we create content around a marketer's brand. So you may see it from so many different um, integrations that we do in all of our programs for marketers and consumers really love it. Some of my favorites are the studios love to work with the Bravo celebrities, and a lot of celebrities themselves are Bravo fans and they'll end up joining in and saying, how can I participate and make some funny things around Vanderpump Rules? Also the Today Show, where we offer shoppable, um, we're actually doing shoppable throughout the whole company. We've tested seven times, but we did a shoppable experience in the Today Show. Products sold out like that. Where you could buy the things you saw on the you show. You could buy the things you saw. We put up something where you can hold up your phone, your camera on your phone, and it automatically goes to a marketer's website, oh, and you man. could purchase mm -hmm. right there. Sold out products. So we're testing all these different formats to help marketers sell their products and also engage consumers around the experience because consumers say you make it fun. Cons products are often part of pop culture. I mean, we all remember Just Do It when it first came out, the Nike ad, or the first yeah. Apple ad. Like, you were, even the, the most recent Apple ad with the kids showing their grandfather, you know, their grandmother on the iPad, you cry. And people talk about great advertising. They talk about great programming. When you can give an environment to host and showcase those ads, consumers lean in in a great way. And there are so many more examples uh, around that. I mean, during yeah. BravoCon, we had the She Shed with Cheryl show up for a day, and the amount of social media that went out for State Farm was incredible. Pepsi created a pink champagne. You had Talenti giving out tastes of their um, you know, sorbet, and so, I'm sorry, gelato. Mm -hmm. And so we, we are finding that when you give these experience to consumers, they're going to talk about them and that helps a marketer. And so we're even leaning into experiential in all different ways to help consumers really galvanize around a marketer's brand. So much to talk about, so much we didn't get to talk about. I know you're extremely busy here at CES and you have to get going. Uh, we're, we didn't even talk about the Peacock streaming service. Let's talk um, about it a little um, bit. Sure, not? great. Um, <laughs> what are you excited about for 2020? Is the Peacock streaming service the Peacock uh, a big part streaming of that? service yeah. is really one of the things that we're most excited about because with Peacock, Peacock, we're giving consumers an alternative in streaming that is affordable to them. And we're also 
putting a place for advertisers, which most streaming services are not doing. And we're really going to par partner with marketers to do new and innovative things. And we'll be talking more about that in the upcoming weeks. And so in a world where there are, yes, a lot of subscriptions, consumers are saying, if you do it right and you give it to me at a right price, we're going to lean in. And so we're so excited to launch that in April this year. So you're and confident there's room for one more streaming service? We really are. Yeah. We really are confident, um, especially when you give it to them at a price that they, they can't turn away from. And um, we know that if you do it right with marketers, that they will lean in. Well, Laura Mullen, NBC Universal. We're going to have you back, actually, uh, in the C-Space studio later on. But thank you so much for joining me one-on-one -on -one here at CES 2020. Thank you so much for having me. Have a great CES. Thank you. I'm James Kotecki. Keep it right here for more great C-Space studio content here at CES 2020.